So today I'm going to show you how to make this one shoulder scrunch center bikini top which I've seen crop up different places. So the pattern is actually layered so you can isolate the size that you want. You just have to make sure that you're printing at 100% or do not scale and double check that the test square measurements match before you join the pieces together. So where there are half hearts, you're just going to join them to form a full heart and you'll have the full pattern piece in the correct size. So you can join these pieces by gluing it down or using a piece of tape, whatever that you prefer. You'll end up with three pattern pieces like this, two for the front and one for the back. And you can see I've highlighted what piece is for what side. I find this helps with asymmetrical pieces, so that's how it's going to be. And then you have to just cut it out in the fabric of your choice and you're going to need some elastic as well as plastic boning or regime. I like to just lay my pattern out before I cut it. When you're happy with that, you can cut it out and don't forget to cut the little notches. So you'll end up with two pieces like this for the front, so one in the lining, one in the self. So this is the front right side. You end up with two pieces for the front left side, again one in the lining and one in the self. And you end up with four pieces for the back, so two in the lining and two in the self, mirrored. Now we can get stitching. We're always going to start with the back, so we're going to match the both the lining and the self. We're going to match the center backs of them and we are going to do a straight stitch across like so. But keep in mind where the notches are for the straps and you want to make sure that you match them right sides together, notches matching and center seams matching too. And we're just going to stitch the outside edge being sure to just leave the opening for our strap together. So I've done both sides here just to show you the variation, but you only need to leave one open and then don't forget to add the elastic as well. Now we're gonna repeat that for the front pieces too. So match them right sides together and just stitch these seams, leaving the side seam and the center front open, as well as the same thing for this side, just, just these seams, leaving the center front and side seams open. Now for elastic, I have a little formula here for you. Basically, you want to measure the seam length without seam allowance and deduct about 3% for it for the most accurate amount that is symmetrical on both sides. And you just got to ease that in. And we also got to prepare our rigiline. So rigiline usually comes in a roll and it tends to be curved like so. So you want to place it on your ironing board, curve side up, and then put a piece of cloth or ironing tape over it and then we are just gonna slowly flatten it with a hot iron. So a couple of seconds, lift, couple of seconds, lift, until we have the flatness that we desire. When that's done, I like to give it a little pat, pat, pat to help it cool a little faster and only pick it up once it's fully cooled so it doesn't warp um, the plastic. And this is what you'll end up with. Now, the edges of Regiline sometimes can be a bit sharp and pokey and it tends to poke through stretch fabrics in particular. So I like to create a little cap by melting it slightly and then just smoothening it out with my fingers. Now we can put everything together. So I find it easier just to lay all the pattern pieces out before I join them just to make sure I have everything in the right direction. So we're going to put the right, the center back and the left. We're going to start with the side seam for the right side and we're going to turn our back piece inside out so we can match it right sides together and basically sandwich these four seams together and then you're going to stitch one centimeter across and then don't forget as well to add the rigiline to this seam so i like to stitch my rigiline in two stitches just to keep it secure and not wobbling about so this is how i usually stitch it here's the little diagram now we can turn it out and you can see this is what we have, we have one done, now we got the other side. So same thing, we're gonna take the right sides, matching it, matching it at the side seams, and 
then we're going to stitch it across and then add the Regiline as well. Okay, so we're nearly done. This is how it's supposed to look. You can see the little openings for the back strap still up. And now we're going to create that little channel so that we can loop the right sides through to go to the back. So we're going to close that with an overlock stitch before we fold it at the fold line on our pattern and then do a straight stitch. This creates like a little channel to pull the strap through so we can have that scrunch effect. So there you go, we're done with that using our fold line guideline and then doing a straight stitch. This is how it should be. Now we can loop it through. Now, be careful when you're looping the strap through to make sure it's flat. We don't want it to be warped inside when we pull it through. So this is how it should look. Now you can just put it through that opening and do a straight stitch. That's completely fine. But if you want a more seamless look, you can undo a small opening on the center back seam and basically bring that strap through, pin it down and do a straight stitch across so it's seamless. And this is what it should look like. I prefer this. I think it looks way cleaner. And I'll just close that opening with a straight stitch. And that's done. You can wear it on one side, the other side. And you can decide where you want your straps to go because that's your design choice. I hope you guys can try this out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.